Good morning, everyone, and happy Saturday. My name is Nick Morrow with Occupy Fantasy. You can find me on Twitter at Nick Morrow DFS. I'm here today to once again help you break down tonight's NBA DFS slates on both DraftKings and FanDuel. Uh, we have a five-game slate tonight starting at 8 p.m. Eastern. Uh, kind of the perfect number of games, in my opinion. Really solid slate. Looking forward to kind of walking through it. I'm still waiting on some injury news, so I'll kind of do my best to talk through scenarios uh, where what to do if players are ruled out, uh, just my favorite plays on both sides, etc. Um, if you haven't already, please like the video. Also, subscribe to the channel. That helps us climb up those YouTube algorithms and get more free content like this out to you. Additionally, if you're not already a member at Occupy Fantasy, check the links in the description below. You get access to the model you see here where you can sort by value for both sites, ownership projections, um, and our OF index. We also have a single uh, lineup builder and a multi lineup builder, a uh, private Discord server full of DFS experts helping you build your lineups on a day to day basis. Um, but yeah, let's get into this uh, five game slate. Again, a size I really like. Um, should be a fun one for sure. I'm going to click between the two sites again. Still waiting on some injury news. Um, so I'll kind of take what we have and see what we can get from it. Um, first game on the slate, we have the Portland Trailblazers at the Houston Rockets. Um, the Blazers are four point favorites on the road, 228 point game total here. Uh, so decent game environment. Um, taking a quick look at the injury report, the Blazers are on a back-to-back. -back. They have not released their injury report yet. Uh, the Houston Rockets have Sengun as probable, Tate is out, uh, Terry Eason is probable, and Josh Christopher is out as well as Jay Sean Tate. Um, so yeah, this one's a little tricky to talk about with Portland because they are on the back-to-back. -back. We don't know if they're going to rule anyone out for rest, um, but as things stand, I do like... Dame, I like Simons. Um, Simons is kind of filling that role that CJ McCollum used to on this team um, in terms of DFS. So most nights, obviously, Dame's the better play, uh, but once in a while, you're going to get these outliers from Simons where he puts up a really big score. Um, those are the nights he could help you win a tournament. Um, on a five-game slate like this, I don't mind taking a few shots on Simons. I know he hasn't been hitting value consistently, but I'm guessing the field's going to feel the same way and his price continues to drop, so I don't mind him. Uh, Jeremy Grant is a fine secondary option. Nurkic, really strong center play, but he's tough to get to just because we do have a lot of value and quality at center tonight, um, but I do like him there for sure. Um, over on the Houston side, Kevin Porter Jr. and Jalen Green look good per usual. Um, Alper and Sangoon, boomer bust center play. I like him a lot on the short slate. Uh, Jabari Smith is fine. Guys like Eric Gordon, I'm really not rushing to get to. Um, but in summary, really, it's Dame here, uh, first and foremost. Definitely better on FanDuel where he's sub 10K. Um, I do like Nurkic on both sides. Uh, those guards for Houston look good and Green and Porter. Uh, but there's really nothing enforcing. I do like Simons as a tournament option, assuming he's going to be low owned. Um, he is kind of due for a big game, and we could see that any night. And a matchup with Houston could be the perfect spot to see him deliver that for us. So, again, a risky play in Simons. Uh, really nothing we're forcing here. I wouldn't say there's any core plays necessarily in this game as things stand. Do really like Nurk. Do really like Dane. But, uh, yeah. Moving on to the next game on the slate, we have the Cleveland Cavaliers hosting the Dallas Mavericks. The Cavs are four-point favorites at home, just a 216-point game total here. Um, so this one's a little bit interesting for multiple reasons. Obviously, if Luke is in, he's one of the best plays on the slate. He's tough to afford, um, but as more value opens up, he does get easier to get to. If you can afford him, um, I do like him a lot here even in the slow game environment against the Cavs. Um, but I found this interesting. Jason Kidd last night was talking about Kemba Walker. Um, Walker's only seen a few minutes so far for the Mavs, but he said, I think Kemba looks really good, and I want to get him more minutes tomorrow, tomorrow meeting today. Um, we saw him only play 13 minutes last night. Um, he's about a fantasy point-per-minute player, but if we can get him over 20 minutes um, at minimum price on both sides or near minimum price on both sides, he's going to be an appealing piece of value. Um, but the way Kid, Kid said it, um, it kind of makes me believe that maybe they rest one of the guards tonight. Maybe it's Luka, Spence, or even THJ on the wing. If one of those guys are out, it would create more min minutes for someone like Kemba Walker. So just something to keep an eye on. As things stand, it does look like most of these guys are in. Still waiting on the injury report, though. Um, the one player I do want to talk about uh, for the Mavericks, regardless of who's in or out, is Christian Wood. He's a bit too cheap um, with Maxi Kleber out of the lineup. And Powell only seeing limited minutes. Um, Wood has finally consistently seen over 30 minutes recently. I like him a lot on both sides. I could see him as a priority. Um, obviously not your conventional value play in that he's not 
sub 5k, but he is too cheap on both sides for the role he's in right now. So really like Christian Wood, really like Luca if he's in. Don't mind Spence, Hardaway, etc. All fine plays for Dallas. Um, but if a couple guys get ruled out, keep an eye on Kevin Walker. It's not going to feel good. It is very risky, but uh, someone who could be valuable on a short slate if we're lacking value. Um, then over on the Cleveland side, uh, no injury report for them either. Uh, I think uh, Jared Allen's probably priced the most favorably on both sides. I do like Donovan Mitchell, um, especially on DK now, where he's sub 9K. We've seen him as high as 10K at times this season, um, so certainly appealing there. Similar on FanDuel, just priced really nicely, Donovan Mitchell here. Obviously not the best game environment against a slow Dallas team who has been decent on defense, but I do think I could get there. Uh, Mobley's fine. Kevin Love, if he were to start, would be interesting. I don't think he does, though. So for me, it's really Jared Allen, Donovan Mitchell here. Don't mind Garland as kind of a secondary play, same with Mobley. Uh, but no priorities. Just keep an eye on that Dallas uh, lineup. Wouldn't surprise me to see them rest Luka or someone tonight, which would create big, big opportunity for someone like Kemba. So just keep an eye on that. Uh, moving into the next game on the slate, we have the Memphis Grizzlies at the OKC Thunder. The Grizzlies are eight and a half point favorites on the road. Um, yeah, Grizzlies are rested. I don't think they have any major injury news here other than Desmond Bain, who's already been ruled out. Yep, Desmond Bain, Danny Green, Jake LaRavia. No one is in that I just listed, but no one is that relevant outside of Bain. So I do like Moran here. I think Jaron Jackson looks good on FanDuel. Um, he's much cheaper on DK, though. We're getting him at 6,900. Obviously, he gets in foul trouble at times, but 6,900 just feels too cheap knowing his upside. Uh, Dylan Brooks fine not really someone i'm rushing to get to i don't mind stephen adams at center but we do have a few good options at center that i don't think we need to necessarily rush to get to him um so no real priorities for me as things stand on the memphis side i do like moran i do like jackson i prefer jackson on bk for sure uh, but yeah ja is one of the better payups on the slate there's no denying that on the okc side uh, no injury report yet out of them they are on a back-to-back um, a team many consider to be tanking. It wouldn't shock me to see them rest someone like SGA. If he's out, obviously Giddy becomes appealing. Um, the big piece of news here, though, is Lou Gwen Stewart actually left the game last night, mid-game. I can't imagine he plays tonight. If he is out, we should see Darius Baisley slide into that starting lineup. Um, and the model agrees he's going to be one of the best value plays on the slate. Uh, so definitely keep an eye on that. If Baisley starts, I do think he's excellent value. 3,500 on DK, 4,800 on FanDuel. Definitely better on DK. Uh, but we really, really need value on the slate. We're just not getting it. Um, so Baisley would be a priority for me, assuming he starts. Um, and Dort is out. So SGA is great regardless. Giddy's fine. Um, we did see Poku get more run last night. He's definitely cheaper on DK. 5,100 on FanDuel. It's tough for me to want to get to. Um, but if we see Robinson Earl out again, I do think that kind of solidifies those minutes for Pokachevsky. So keep an eye on that. Um, but with uh, Poku getting those minutes last night, uh, Baisley did rest. So I think Baisley's going to be the value play we want from OKC tonight. But certainly keep an eye on that starting lineup. Um, but yeah, we can move into the next game. Just keep an eye on the news for all of these. Luckily, most of the games do lock in that 8 p.m. start time. So um, next game on the slate, we have the Utah Jazz at the Milwaukee Bucks. The Bucks are now just four-point favorites at home. Um, definitely some injury news to consider here. We have Drew Holiday probable, Chris Middleton out, and Giannis is questionable. So if Giannis is in, obviously one of the best plays on the slate. Like him anywhere, you can afford him. If he's out, Drew becomes one of the best plays on the slate, as does Bobby Portis. Um, I really like Grayson Allen as a value regardless with Chris Middleton now out of the lineup. Um, and Brooke Lopez, fine center play as well. So I do really like Giannis here, but it does seem like there's a chance he's ruled out. And if he is, Drew Holiday is going to become a priority. Uh, Bobby Portis would become a priority. Would really like Grayson Allen. Maybe Javon Carter, if he starts, is a riskier option, but he would be in play. Um, and then if we do see Jordan Nora start, which does happen um, on occasion for Giannis, he would be very appealing to me here. Uh, but again, we need to wait on this news. This is news we will have by long time. So just keep an eye on that lineup. Again, if Giannis is in, I love him. If he's out, pretty much load up on the rest of the box. Um, and regardless, I do like Drew. I think he's a solid play. Um, certainly easier to afford than Giannis is tonight, but obviously not the same upside. Um, then over on the Utah side, no Colin Sexton, nothing else really relevant. Um, I like Laurie Markane, and I think he's fine. Clarkson, um, 
looks good. I do prefer Mark Cannon of the two if we're comparing them. Um, he's been the more consistent fantasy producer, hitting higher ceilings. Um, Vanderbilt, Olin, and Kessler in the front court, all decent GPP options. I will say I think Olenek has the highest floor, but maybe the lowest ceiling of the three, which makes it kind of tricky. Um, I'd probably use him first, but then Vanderbilt, uh, where you're getting blocks and steals on FanDuel, he is more appealing over here. Uh, Kessler, even if he's not starting, he's been such a good fantasy point per minute producer that I do think he's at least in play, but not someone I'd be rushing to get to if Olenek is in the lineup, as is Laurie Markkanen, because those bigger games from Kessler has ha have had at least one of Olenek or Laurie out. Um, Mike Conley, too, 5,500 on both sides. I think he's fine. Malik Beasley off the bench, fine, not a priority. Um, so really nothing I'm prioritizing from Utah. All the starters look solid. I do like Laurie Markkanen probably best. Um, that's a bit of a cop-out answer, though, as he is the most expensive player over here. Um, so yeah, I'll say Mike Conley, maybe a point per dollar is someone I could see myself getting into. Uh, but again, definitely keep an eye on that Milwaukee news. That's kind of the biggest domino to fall in that game. Uh, final game on the slate here, we have the Pelicans at the Suns. Uh, I'm just taking a quick sip of coffee. Yeah, so the Pelicans are still without Brandon Ingram. Uh, looks like Jose Alvarado is back and probable. Um, but yeah, as long as Ingram's out, we're going to be able to look at Zion. We're going to be able to look at McCollum. Uh, Zion's price is up, but he has been hitting that 50-point kind of threshold that we need from him at 10K. Um, McCollum, sub 8K on both sides, certainly easier to get to. I like him a lot here. Uh, Joe Val, if you want value at center, he works. Um, Nance, though, whenever Joe Val gets in foul troubles, he's had some really big games lately. Uh, so he's someone I'd consider if I'm playing multiple lineups and tournaments. Um, but really, I mean, the priorities here are simple. It's Zion, it's CJ. Um, CJ, obviously, easier to get to. Zion, obviously, the higher ceiling, but I like them both a lot. Um, then over on the Phoenix side, we do have some injury news. We have Campaign out. Cam Johnson, obviously, still out. Jay Crowder is still out on the trade block. Uh, but DeAndre Ayton, that's the big piece here. Um, John Clandall was the better backup for Aiton last time out. Um, he is cheaper on both sides. But I do imagine Biombo starts here, and it is worth mentioning that he got in immediate foul trouble last time out. He picked up two quick fouls in that first stint. Uh, when he checked back in, he picked up his third, so that really opened things up for Landell. Um, I do prefer Landell if I'm choosing between the two, um, but it wouldn't shock me to see Biombo start, and if he does and we're getting him at a fraction of the ownership, um, that's definitely going to be appealing to me. So something just to keep an eye on there. Um, but yeah, let me quickly take a look at the ownership of those two. Seeing Lando at like 27%, uh, Biombo at 18%. So yeah, 10% less for the starter who should see more minutes as long as he doesn't get in foul trouble. I do like Biombo as a tournament pivot there. Um, in cash games, you're probably getting to more Lando. Um, so just a quick slate overview here. Obviously, some news we're waiting on. Giannis is questionable. That's the big one. Um, a lot of teams on back-to-backs wouldn't surprise me to see Dallas for us Luca here. Um, I think it's more likely maybe we get THJ or Spence with a day off. Um, but maybe Kevin Walker becomes a thing. Uh, very risky, but Kid did say he's going to play more minutes tonight, which has me thinking he gets to 20 minutes. And at a fantasy point per minute, near minimum price, I'm just like, we're lacking value. That is a lot of appeal. Um, but yeah, Darius Baisley is going to be a big value piece, assuming we go and store it sound. Keep an eye on that. Um, but yeah, fun slate, five gamer, lots to like, lots of guys to pay up for. Maybe not as much value as we are hoping for, so definitely keep an eye on the news throughout the day. Um, that's why it's a good idea to become a member at Occupy Fantasy. You can get access to the model, which updates in real time. So as that news breaks, you'll see players value scores adjust etc um, also you get access to the discord server where you get to speak with our dfs pros um, they'll help you build and we'll help you talk through this news as it breaks throughout the day um, once again my name is nick morrow please like the video subscribe to the channel you can find me on twitter at nick morrow dfs looking forward to another really fun slate tonight let's have some fun and make some money